Hello, I'm Bradley and welcome to my channel. First of all, I want to apologise that I am not my happy, bubbly self. And this is about an update, uh, health-wise, which has been going on with me. And it's time to kind of be a little bit more realistic. A lot of, um, recently what I've been doing on my channel, I've been trying to really grit and grit my teeth and really sort of carry on as though things are normal which is quite a lot of what I've been trying to do lately with family and with work and a lot of things really to be quite honest with you but um I have used my channel for a whole host of things in my life about keeping me positive and keeping me uh, mentally healthy in as opposed to rather than keeping everything bottled up using it to talk through things, using it to connect, and I've had some really, really amazing comments. And that has been around my hearing problems, that has been around my what seems an endless journey, which should have been two simple hernia repairs, um, and a severe overactive bladder, which has absolutely changed my life. Um, it's been such a prolific problem for such a long time. Um, it's really completely changed me, to be quite honest with you. Um, and that's what this is about today. This is about an update on the current situation of how things have progressed. And boy, have they really progressed. And um, kind of feel um, like everybody else is kind of moving on in life, but I'm just kind of redoing the same thing over and over. Um, yeah, so lots, lots, uh, lots happening, lots of change. But let's start if anybody who's new watching this and wants to find out more, particularly if you're going through hernia problems yourself, um, I have had a feminal hernia and I have had a inguinal hernia. So I was lucky not and had both, both on my right side. And let's just tell a little bit of background about that. So if you've never watched my channel at all or you've not known my situation, my journey at all, um, welcome to my channel. My name is Bradley and there is not a lot of what I haven't experienced. You could probably say the easiest thing to say, I have probably experienced every single issue what could have gone wrong with a hernia operation um, and it's left me with a lot of problems. So to give you a little bit of background information, I had a I had a problem started in 2017. I went for a family holiday and this is where it all started. I went for a family holiday and there was one particular day where we done like a like a large bike ride, but it was sort of like that you had three people on the back, two people in the front, and then the back of it could have another two people as well. And it was two people cycling in the front. I can't quite remember if anybody else was cycling in the back. I don't believe they were. It was just two people at the front. So even now saying that, it sounds like a lot of weight, doesn't it? A lot of pressure. Um, but it was myself and it was uh, one of my brothers and we were cycling and we went for quite a long time. It was really, really enjoyable and I really loved doing it. But I was starting to feel a lot of pressure in my groin area, a lot of pressure. I thought no more of it at all. It was a very action packed holiday. We'd done lots of walking, lots of activities, lots of swimming and things, lots going on. It was amazing, an amazing, amazing trip, holiday, vacation, whatever you want to call it. It was really enjoyable. Later on that same day, or I think it could have been the following day, I really started to feel a real low down bearing ache um, on my right groin. Never thought no more about it at all. Um, and then with my niece and nephew, something which parents always tell you, don't they? Never run around a swimming pool. I was telling them to stop running around a swimming pool. I was running, slipped, and I hit the ground as hard as anything. And first of all, where I hit my hand, I thought that I broke my thumb. I thought that I broke my thumb and I could hardly move my thumb, my hand. I thought I broke my thumb in my hand, but um, luckily I didn't at all. It wasn't until kind of a little bit later on in the day and the following day or around that sort of three day period where I could really feel something in my groin. Um, lots of pain, but when I say pain, I don't mean a real shooting sharp pain. I mean a dull ache. And, um, and I had this lump, this bulge come through in my right groin. Um, and I thought, what's this? And, and kind of never thought too much about it. It was uncomfortable. It was quite difficult for me to get around, um, but it would come and go. It didn't cause me too much of a problem. It was just uncomfortable and it was there. Um, and that was kind of there throughout June 2017. Um, when I got back home, uh, it kind of happened away. I had the odd bad day with it, pressure, sort of low down feeling of 
discomfort, heaviness, that type of thing. If I coughed or sneezed, I could feel something move. Um, but it kind of, it kind of sort of fathomed out and it didn't really bother me too much. I went on holiday again in September, again a family holiday, lots of activities and things, um, lots of walking, lots of swimming, and it started to become more of an issue for me. And it wasn't until I got back on the plane to come home and the pressure, whatever happened on that plane, I do not know. But as we were taking off, I started to feel quite unwell. Um, I had a lot of pressure in my groin and the hernia came through with a vengeance. Um, real bad pressure. I felt terribly unwell of it. Lots of pressure. Um, they were fantastic to me on board that plane until I got home. And then from that, I, I couldn't really lift anything at all. Um, couldn't really do too much. Um, I quickly went to see the doctors, uh, went went to the doctors rather, um, and they, they diagnosed it that it was a hernia. It was a hernia. And because of where it was falling, they weren't sure whether it was a feminal hernia or an inguinal hernia. Um, but I think the feminal hernia, in fact, I know the feminal hernia is more rare to get, I believe, um, can be more problematic because of the space it falls through. I think there's a higher risk of strangulation. So they moved me through the system very, very quickly because of the pain and problems and things I was having. Now, at this point, I didn't have a bladder problem. I was needing to use the bathroom more because of the pressure of the hernia coming through. I continued to work for as long as I could, but it was affecting my walking. I had a very big sort of hernia lump coming through um, in my groin. So it was making it very difficult to walk around and to carry on with my job. And it was up and down. I worked in retail banking at the time in a very, very busy banking hall, um, up and down lots of flights of stairs and running around here, there and everywhere. A very busy role. Loved the role, but it was getting very, very difficult to do. Um, and after some time, uh, I remember one day stood talking to a customer and um, at this time, I was starting to wear a hernia truss belt to hold the hernia up out of the way. And I remember talking to a customer and all of a sudden I can remember this horrific pain and the hernia just coming down even lower. And it was like something was falling and it was really, really hot. And that happened quite often. And after that, work kind of come to a standing halt for me. I couldn't do it anymore. So in November 2017, I had my first hernia surgery. I had two lymph nodes taken away. Um, I think something to do with infection, I'm not sure, um, and I had the hernia repaired with a mesh comb. Um, straight away, I had bladder problems, straight away, um, overactive bladder, going, needing to go to the bathroom a lot more, having bladder weakness as well. Um, yeah, horrible, absolutely horrible. Um, several days after my surgery, I became very, very unwell with severe vomiting, severe sickness. And if you've just had some sort of abdomen surgery and I had open surgery because I wasn't a candidate for keyhole surgery because I'm too thin, apparently, um, and the clips and the stitches and things would have shown through. So I had open surgery um, and the skull isn't great. Um, and yeah, can you imagine being sick and everything several days after having that type of surgery? And I was very slow to recover. I had lots of pain, lots of discomfort, horrendous. To be quite honest, I thought I was going to die at points. Um, and that's not an exaggeration. It really was not at all. And um, to cut a long story short, I was very slow to recover. I think it was nearly 10 weeks, if not couple more, possibly. It was nearly three months, which should have been around two to four weeks for everything to kind of settle down, for the pain to go away. The bladder problem didn't really go away. Um, then as we came into 2018, things were OK, but very, very quickly I had, um, it was found I had another lump there and that was the inguinal hernia, I'm told. But the funniest thing was when I went for the surgery in November 17, I felt a lump there and I said this to the surgeon on the morning. But nothing was done about that one and they didn't really, I don't know kind of what happened about that, but nothing was looked into it any further. But um, I, there, it was kind of in my recovery, I could feel something there, but they thought that possibly it was scarring tissue, it was swelling. Well, given about three months or so, um, when I was examined again, it was told that I had another hernia there. Um, bearing in mind, after seeing some urologists and things and lots of different medications and things, the bladder problem settled, but it didn't ever completely go away. But I had bad days and good days with it. It was then when I had more of a problem. Um, I think I went away actually in 2018 in March and um, limping, sort of hobbling around with this sort of discomfort, this bulge again coming through. Um, it's quite horrific. And um, then July 2018, I remember my birthday 
in 2018 actually going out for dinner and I had a job to walk, I had a job to get around and I remember looking around at everybody thinking why is this happening um, and I was really getting, I hate to use the word, but I was really getting quite disabled with the problem and it was really hunching me over and I was finding things very, very difficult and I remember going out for my birthday. Let's just work this out, so I've just turned 27, I was 26, yep, so it would have been my 25th birthday and I went out with family for dinner and um, I needed to use the bathroom more because when the hernias were about, I needed to use the bathroom more and more and more. Um, it's ever since I had my first hernia operation, the bladder problem was there. I'd have good days with the medication, but other times it was just, no, it was there majorly, really bad. Every time I had a hernia, it would be majorly there. And I remember going to the bathroom and it was literally, I, I thought it was ridiculous, so many flights of stairs to get down to a bathroom. And I can remember actually having to have help getting down these where it was that bad. So how, that, that really, I felt rock bottom, absolutely rock bottom. Had the surgery several days later in July 2018. Again, I was very, very slow to recover. This time they removed the hernia. Um, and again, I was very slow to recover. The, the bladder problem was horrific straight away after. I had a few problems with anaesthetic. I was slow apparently to come around from the anaesthetic, um, which of course got my mum and dad extremely, extremely worried. Um, both of which I will point out through my workplace. This was through my private medical insurance, um, which, yeah, wasn't amazing, to be quite honest with you at all. Um, I was looked after well, but through my experience, I've what should have been two simple operations. And I'm not saying this is anybody's fault. Um, it could have been, of course, where it didn't agree with me. So by this point, I had a mesh cone in my groin on the right side and I had a mesh plate. Um, very slow to recover. And I think I had the surgery done in July 2018. I didn't return to work until... I think mid-October, mid-October, so it was about nearly 10 weeks, again, it took me to recover, um, and the bladder problem was really, really there, so in that time I, I tried different medications for overactive bladder syndrome, um, I tried all sorts of things, all sorts of mechanisms, sort of Kijo exercises daily to try and strengthen my um, pelvic floor muscles, the bladder, um, bladder training, you name it, I tried it. Um, horrific. Bear in mind, I'm in my 20s and having that type of problem. I'm in my 20s. Um, but it went away. I, I kind of started to get my life back together a bit. I still had bad days with the bladder, but I, I got my life back together. Um, and I kind of, it's sad, isn't it? But I built my life around that problem. But I still had to be very, very careful. Um, and then as we came into 2019, um, I could start to feel a dropping sensation. I could start to feel lots of horrible sort of problems and frightened the life out of me to think I had another hernia and I spent the first six to seven months of 2019 back and forth with specialist, um, numerous specialists, the original surgeon um, and I had steroid injections in the scar tissue for the scar because the second operation they went back through the same scar so you can imagine um, I had steroid injections to help me with the, the, the dropping sensation, thinking that it was just the scar tissue. I had several scans. Nobody could categorically tell me if I had another hernia or not. Then the specialist um, who I'd seen, I cannot keep up how many appointments I had. But in 2019 as well, I also had a lot of gastric problems as well. I had a lot of indigestion problems. Um, so I had uh, the gastro gastro um gastroscopy I also had that done in February um, as well as the bladder problems going on as well um, so lots going on I had a house scare in February um, where they even told me where I could have had something sinister going on with my esophagus um, so that was a real trauma too um, so it's been a hell of a roller coaster the last couple of years it really has been and then as we came to the latter part of 2019 um, because the steroid injections helped for a couple of weeks. Um, the dropping sensation was there, but the pain and discomfort subsided. But it lasted for a couple of weeks. Then I went back and I had it done again. Um, it was nowhere near as good as the first session at all, and that was steroid injections. But again, I kind of got my life back on track. And after, our, after I'd say, a couple of months, about three months worth of okay-ish of life, I, um, 
went back to the doctor and I started to have a lot of pain, a lot of discomfort, especially when I was lifting things, dropping, and like a dropping sensation coming down the stairs. If I was coughing, if I was sneezing, um, I went to the doctor and I had an ultrasound scan in December 2019. And um, this was done on the NHS here in the UK. And um, I didn't use my medical care um, insurance then, because to be honest, I wasn't really very impressed with it anyway. And um, I remember the doctor calling and saying, I'm really sorry, Bradley, but um, you have a, a recurrent feminal hernia, which is the one which I went through the most pain and discomfort and hell with. That was absolutely like somebody had shot me, to be quite honest with you, um, that I went through most of 2019 with somebody telling me I didn't have a hernia there um, when actually it was. However, I didn't let it knock me back at all. Um, I went for a different job. I got my finance career moving forward. I'm studying accountancy exams in the background, bearing around with all this going on. I'm looking after my grandmother with Alzheimer's, who is so close to me. So I'm moving on with life. I'm not letting it hold me back at all. And then as we had 2019 come into 2020, I was fine. But however, the bladder problem really ramped up horrendous. And I've had the bladder problem nonstop since really, really horrific. Bearing in mind, I'm not talking here about having bad days and good days. I mean, horrifically, every single day, badly. And I get lighter days, but it's been there bad since when I had the gastroscopy around that kind of time, I was traveling back and forth to a hospital in February 2019 to now, um, I've had the bladder problem really bad. And I have really bad days of it, really, really bad days of it. And um, we are in August of 2020. And the first three months of the year, the bladder problem was kind of getting worse, but I was still able to carry on my life. But I would have to start to plan where bathroom facilities were every time I went out, I'd have to plan ahead. I'd have to take things with me. I'd have to make sure um, I'd have to plan for every eventuality. Um, that is rubbish. That is difficult. Um, March, I had, um, of course, in the back of my mind, I'm told I got this third hernia. Um, March, I had a urodynamics test, which is the tubing everything up into your bladder. Um, where they, they do the pressure testing, they fill your bladder with uh, liquid, um, they check your bladder muscles and everything. And I was told that my bladder muscles were working, but they weren't working in the right sequence. So they could tell on screen that there was something going wrong with my bladder, um, which I thought, OK, something's really starting to something starting to sort of come together here. Shortly after that, I had a flexible cystoscopy, which brace yourself is a flexible tube up through your privates into your bladder. And it's horrific. The feeling is absolutely horrific. I remember one of the nurses holding my feet to the bed whilst it was happening with the consultant. And um, and I remember being quite rude, forgive me for saying it. Um, and she was saying, just stay calm, just stay calm. Um, and I'm, I remember gritting my teeth and saying, I am staying calm. Afterwards, of course, I apologised. And um, I think they knew because of the experience was pretty nasty. Um, but it's, it's not unbearable. It's just very, very uncomfortable. And of course, you're thinking of the worst possible things here. So if somebody is watching this and they're going through that, please don't. It is awful. I'm not going to say it's nice because it's not. It is awful. It's difficult to, to go through. But you do get through it. You do get through it. And they are trained to keep you calm and to get you through it. Um, and then I was told that I had some problems with my bladder so that they wanted to try um they wanted to try, uh, I think it's called bladder distension surgery or hydro distension surgery, which is to change the capacity size of my bladder, which I thought to myself, OK, with the problems I was in, it was changing my life. I, I mean, the problems I've had literally the worst months in 2019, I could not leave the house. It was that bad. I could not leave the house at all. It was taking everything off me, um, as well as having this sort of developing hernia going on in the background as well. So it was giving me lots and lots of problems. Um, and then, of course, COVID hit. COVID virus hit with the whole world. So it slowed all my appointments down. Everything stopped. But of course, my heart goes out to all of those people which we lost. And that was, of course, the main thing. Um, me, I didn't really care about it at the time. Um, but moving forward, I had two very, very, I had one scary episode where I stepped out of the bath in the bathroom. The hernia had fallen and I was in horrific pain. I couldn't move. I had a lot of pain in sort of 
I'm just going to say it in sort of like your privates. I had a lot of pain there um, in my groins, horrific pain, stabbing pain, really thought that something was happening to me. Um, it passed. I went to the doctors the following day. I got a telling off from the doctor that I should have gone to A&E because did I want to end up with having part of my bowel removed if it had strangulated? It didn't, thankfully. Um, and they were pushing my appointment through to see a reoccurrent hernia specialist. In the background of that happening, um, I then didn't lift anything heavy at all. I really started to go more careful. And from about March time, it's got a lot of problems with keeping... Um, my walking's been quite difficult. I haven't been able to walk long distances to the point now where I can't really walk about too much at all. Um, I can't really go out too much at all without somebody with me to sort of help me with things. I find getting in the car very, very difficult um, because of the pain and the discomfort there in my groin. And pretty recently then I decided to look back up the original surgeon. I'd met with the original surgeon who um, who actually before that I had a very scary episode where um, I woke up with horrific pain in the middle of the night. Um, sort of the same as what I just described, but probably worse. Um, and I'll be honest, I thought that something was happening to me. I thought that I was going to lose my life, to be honest with you. I really did. And um, that week ended up with being back and forth a &E. I wouldn't allow them to admit me into the hospital. And I had scans and tests and things. And I had a very mixed experience where they were um, they were putting me back to the original surgeon and were trying to move pain relief and things, but nothing would really take with good effect. Um, so then it started up pushing my appointments through. I picked up my private medical care again and I seen the original surgeon. I had an MRI scan, but it was told that on the MRI scan that it couldn't they couldn't tell 100 percent. So one scan on the ultrasound scan said that I had the hernia reoccurrent there. The other scan said that um, it was a lot of scar tissue there, so it was hard to determine what was going on. So, um, and bearing in mind, I've had a lot of problems with discoloration in my right leg. So this, the, the issues are on my right groin, but very often what's been getting worse since about March time is my leg has been going blue and my leg has been going, sometimes my foot's been going almost quite a blacky blue, where I lose complete colour from my leg, it goes very, very cold, pins and needles, um, and that's been getting worse, as well as the hernia has been getting worse, um, as well as whatever's going on in that leg has been getting worse. And this is where things change, because I met with the original surgeon after all of this, and I was informed that... Um, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to take a picture of how bad my leg's getting and the coloration. And when I showed him, he was absolutely shocked. They weren't necessarily completely um, committed that I. they thought that I had another hernia there. They thought that I was starting to have problems with the original hernia repair. So the mesh which was used, the mesh cone for the feminal hernia. Um, but he decided to refer me to a vascular surgeon because of the problems I was having with the discoloration and being very, very concerned with that. Um, but he said to me, which was really quite interesting, that he wasn't done with me having finished with surgery. And I thought that he had been. I thought after going through two surgeries, I thought that he had been. Bear in mind, I hadn't been in touch with him since July 18. I had one checkup after, um, but after that, I think that he wasn't, I seen him actually having said that about the problems in 2019 once and he referred me on to somewhere else thinking that he wouldn't be prepared to do any more surgery on me and that he would see me in the future. I had two steroid injections to try and um, cope with the symptoms which of course I had good effect for weeks, not months, weeks. I've seen him recently within about the last six to six weeks and I seen a vascular surgeon. After seeing that vascular surgeon, he was very on board with me that the problems I was having with my bladder, I'll be very, very honest as well, on the back of having all this hernia surgery, I have an awful lot of problems bowel related. Um, for some reason, I sometimes my bowels literally come to a standstill. I find it very, very difficult for anything like that at all. Um, using the bathroom is absolutely hell. Um, and it's life changing, to be honest with you. Again, always having to plan ahead with these problems. And apparently I'm having a problem with autonomic nerve system with my foot, um, my leg, my bowel and my bladder. So I'm apparently now 
um, having a problem with the mesh from the first repair. Now, if this is wrong, this is what I'm going by. This is why I'm sort of breathing. I'm getting out. I'm not talking to people. I'm talking to my channel. And if you're watching this, incredible. And it really does help. And um, I have had endless conversations, endless appointments, endless consultant appointments with the original surgeon and the new surgeon, who are fantastic. I had a call yesterday to go through some of the risks. I've received letters with the risks because I am told that this next surgery will be a mesh removal surgery. But apparently mesh removal surgery is very difficult, is notoriously difficult. And for me, being a very difficult case, it would be difficult. Apparently, there are risks that it might not work. There are risks that it might make things worse. Um, I remember reading the letter and the letter which I got from this second vascular surgeon was that Bradley uh, Bradley walked into my room as a very disabled young man, um, leaning forward, leaning forward with his spine, having problems sitting down um, and it was evident, apparently, that I had a real severe problem with what was going on. And reading that, I really did think to myself, what on earth has happened? How am I here? How has this happened? And you know what, through parts of my appointments, I kind of switch off and I'm kind of looking and I kind of think to myself, is this ever going to end? And you know what, people keep saying to me, it's going to be OK. My parents and my brothers don't say it to me because I think they know that that's not what I want to hear. Of course, that it's going to be OK. But when somebody who doesn't really know me or through work and things and they say it's going to be OK, don't worry about it. And they move on. It's like nobody knows how anybody feels. Why would they? And at the end of the day, why would some people care? Because it's not them going through it. But um, when somebody says that to me, it's going to be OK. I just find that really frustrating because somebody brushes it off and. Um, really, very difficult, really, very difficult. Um, so now what I'm waiting for is I, I had a conversation yesterday about if I wanted to accept all the risks, if I was happy to go ahead with the risks for the surgery, because apparently where the mesh cone is, it's next to the feminal vein and the main arteries and things for my leg. Um, and there's a lot of risks. And um, they discussed the uh, hemorrhaging risk. They've discussed the risk of being worse. Um, they've discussed even risks where it's close to the spermatic cord of me even having children. Um, so lots of risks, lots of risks going on. Of course, that's something I want to have in the future. So that absolutely petrifies me. I'd love a family. I'd love an amazing wife and a huge big house and loads of children. But yeah, that's got to get through this festival, haven't I? Um, so it does worry me, petrifies the life out of me. Um, and talking about the call yesterday, the, the vascular surgeon who I seen was incredible. And um, that was incredible. He really, really was fantastic, really, really knows his stuff. And I'm glad he's on board. And there's going to be a team of two surgeons who's going to be doing my next operation. Apparently, it's going to be long, it's going to be difficult, and it will be a lot to recover from because I was slow to recover from the previous two surgeries. So apparently, I'm expecting even more recovery this time. Um, so there might well be a break from my channel, but I will be updating at some point. But, um, yeah, life is certainly difficult at the moment, I have to admit. And I had the call yesterday, and when I come from the call and I spoke with my parents, I could see how upset they were. But my parents have always been very, very supportive. My mum's absolutely incredible. My dad is. He keeps it all boxed up, I have to admit. He really does keep it all boxed up. My mum, absolutely incredible. My dad, absolutely incredible. And the other person who I used to always be as a rock with was my nan. But bless her, she has Alzheimer's now. So it's a very different relationship. But I know even when I smile from her when I tell her, I know that love and that support is there. So that's amazing. So I've got a fantastic support network. My brothers are amazing as well. But um, and my mum's crying yesterday about it, and I just thought to myself, Do you know, what? all of this stress, all of this stress going on, I just want, I just want to go on holiday. I just want to go on with my life. I just want to go on holiday, and I want everything to go away. But of course, it's not going to happen. But um, I've kind of was thinking about this, and I haven't been sleeping very at all lately, at all. Um, and I find it very, very difficult to sort of comprehend everything. So I woke up this morning, and I thought to myself, Let's get ready. Let's get ready for work, because I'm still working and working from home, which is fantastic. Um, I, I've, you'll see from my channel recently, I've got the job which I've always wanted in regards to my sort of accountancy and finance career, but that's from home. Um, 
which is amazing because I don't know how that was a godsend because I don't know how that would work because I'm struggling getting around. I find it very difficult to set down in things at the moment, even just doing that. I and mean, of course, all the bathroom related problems as well. It's pretty much hell at the moment. Um, but I always think there's always somebody worse off. So I don't I never try to moan about it. This is me getting this off my chest for my channel, the bumpy road of life, good and bad. And this is just a bit of a bump at the moment. And even though it feels like an absolute mountain I've got to climb, I am truly believing that this will all go away and it will be fine. Um, it is scary, I have to admit, when I was telling my mum about it, I could see my mum was very upset. Um, I could see it, how it kind of hit my dad and I could see my mum, tears rolling down her face. And I thought, hmm, this is absolutely rubbish. Um, but yeah difficult very very difficult so i woke up this morning i thought to myself let's go for the biggest dramatic hairstyle you can think of let's crack on with things i've had a bad day in regards to pain and things today i have to mix i am in quite a lot of pain and discomfort each day now um so i try to manage that of all different things i've recently tried physiotherapy which hasn't really gone very well um at all in fact sometimes it's really exacerbated the problems i've had with my groin with a lot of pain and discomfort so that's kind of on hold at the moment because i really try to get my walking back as straight as possible because i do tend to lean forward and i do tend to go over to my bad side now um which i'm i find it very difficult to get about as well which is absolutely how but this is just a blip in the road and i will get through this um i have to admit even recently you'll know from my channel hair is important to me and, and recently when i got my hair cut several weeks back um, and I found it, of course, with COVID and everything going on at the moment, um, they have to wash your hair. And I had a mask on, I had a, a cape and gloves and everything, and I remember trying to get in this chair where you have to lean back with your hair and um, to have it washed. And it was quite, there was quite a lot of people in that, and I could see with me sort of hobbling to get through the door into... Nobody really spoke to me too much about it, but everybody was really nice in there. But as soon as I was kind of struggling to sort of sit back in the chair, everybody was kind of looking at me. And um, I found it very difficult to step up from the chair and then get to the seat where I was having my hair cut. And that sympathetic smile, I got about three or four of them from different people in there. And uh, it, in a way, it just made me feel more infuriated. And something else recently, I've been to see my nan. I, I try and see my nan, even though I'm not very well at all with things lately. Um, I don't say that. I am well. Um, I don't know why I said that. I am well. I've just got this thing going on um and i had i went to see my nan and this young very very pretty young girl said to me um because she could see me having difficulty getting up some stairs to see my nan um, and she said to me would you like me to help you would you like me to hold your arm and i kind of looked in a split second i could have snapped but actually i didn't because i appreciated the help and i appreciated the concern but i thought to myself i'm in my 20s I do not need anybody to help me. I don't need anybody to hold my arm. And you know what? I might sound like an absolute pig saying that. And that's not what I'm trying to come across and say. But it just goes to show that that is where, that's how bad things have got. And I haven't really noticed then. It's been happening just absolutely under my nose, under my feet, you could say, quite literally. Um, and it's, and I've kind of been brushing it aside. But, um, yeah, so let's keep things positive. Moving forward, what's happening now? So I am waiting for another call, more information um, about now preparing for surgery. So I've had my call um, from, I've met with the consultant, both consultants, my original surgeon who done both my hernia repairs. He's now said, which is strange that my previous two hernia repairs were fails, but yet even our previous conversation, he thought they were they were positive outcomes, they were successes, but now apparently they're fails. He hadn't finished with me surgically. Um, but it's fine. I understand this because it could just be me. It could be sort of me inside with everything going on because um, it has been a lot of problems. Um, I do feel positive, but um, the second surgeon is what I've met with. So now I'm awaiting further detail, kind of further appointments, and I will update my channel when I am waiting to go in for surgery. But I believe it will be mesh removal surgery and kind of exploratory, I believe. Um, and after that, it will probably be quite a long recovery because that's what happened on the first two times it was very long it was a it was about eight eight weeks maybe eight weeks a bit longer than that um but i think about three weeks of me kind of not really being able to get about at all um i don't know why that was i don't know why that was at all but i'm 
this time I've said to my, um, it was about a week before I could start walking around, well I say walking around, trying to get myself around last time, um, but nobody's been able to tell me why I've had such a slow and difficult recovery, especially with the bladder problems as well, but I've already said to my family that, that, that this, um, this time, the second day, I'll be up sorting this hair out, and I've come up with a bit of a phrase with my mum, because my eldest brother bought me, because um, I absolutely love champagne, and I he bought me some amazing champagne for my birthday, my 27th birthday, with lots of other gifts and things. And I enjoyed a glass of that for my birthday, but I had two bottles, and I said after all these problems are over, because I wasn't particularly well on my birthday either, um, with problems and things going on, but I really wore a smile. I try to keep a smile. I try to be positive all the time. If somebody asks me if I'm okay, I try to say, yes, I'm fine. I'm absolutely fine. Um, but I said that I would have the other bottle when, that sounds awful, doesn't it? I would open the other bottle with my family once this is all over. So I've said to my mum, it will be, think positive, champagne and hair gel. <laughs> so after this, it is scary, it really is scary, I'm absolutely petrified because of all the risks and things, is it going to be okay, am I going to be okay? But yeah, it's silly isn't it, it's absolutely silly, but of course I will be, and um, I will be updating after all of this, and following that, I have literally said, champagne and hair gel, so... There we go, really. So you have to be positive, don't you? So that's what I'm waiting for now. I'm waiting for... And you know what? After this is done, the bladder problem might well go away. The problems we're having with my bowels and things might well go away. Um, they think possibly it is. Like I said to you before, they now think... The second vascular surgeon thinks that the mesh may well have moved and may well be up against my bladder, causing me problems with my bladder and my bowels as well. So that's why it's got to come out. So my thinking is, if you're both... If the original surgeon's thinking it, that I might have a problem there. And the vascular surgeon, the second surgeon I've seen, who are both going to be coming together to, as a team to do my next surgery, and hopefully my third and final surgery, hopefully that after this, I'm never going to have to have anything done again. Um, they've also got to think about what they're going to put in place, because of course I had quite a bad hernia there, so if they take that repair away, what are they going to put there? I believe some sort of collagen sort of mesh thing repair more apparently softer, more sort of body friendly um, repair. So that's very, very interesting. Um, and I think following that, I'll go back to being me. And hopefully the bladder problem will go away and hopefully I won't have to have the bladder distension surgery because that's going to be something separate because I don't want another anaesthetic because that always worries me. Because um, for some reason I seem to be quite slow to come back from the anaesthetic. I don't know why that is. I think one time I had to get my mum and I remember my mum absolutely petrified. I remember saying all these weird things and that I wanted to get up and walk about, but um, I don't remember it. It's only what I've been told. So yeah, so keeping things positive, that's my update. That's my update, and I think that's pretty much everything. Yeah, so my thinking now is if both surgeons are thinking which are going to come together to f treat me finally, if both surgeons are thinking it's a problem in the original mess, let's just get this out um, of my groin. I was well before. Let's get it out. I never had any problems, sort of bladder, bowel related, groin, walking, back. Never had none of those problems before. Let's get that out of me and deal with whatever happens afterwards. Yeah, let's turn it around positive. Doesn't my hair look cool today? <laughs> I thought this morning, let's do something big, really over the top. Get the comb, get the powder, get the free spray. Let's turn everybody's frown upside down. I text my brothers this morning. When life gives you, excuse my language, a shitty situation, throw a can of free spray back at it. And that's exactly what I've done today. <laughs> okay, thanks very much for watching this. It really means the world. I feel a bit calmer, a bit more sort of open, a bit more sort of talkative now. So thanks very much for sharing that with me. It means the world to me. Um, and until next time, there will be a day when all of this is over. It really will be. And um, yeah, you have to be positive, don't you? And there are so many more people far worse off than me, isn't there? There really, really is. And I'm not just saying that. There is. Um, there we go. OK. As I say, thanks very much for watching me. It means the world that you've shared this with me. And until next time, we will see you then. Bye now.